Okay, great. Um, I, I think we'll, we'll probably get started if that's okay. Um, Will, is YouTube sort of up and, up and going? Yeah, that's all good. Is, and, and we've got all us here as well. So um, we'll, we'll, we've got two ways of people joining us. So um, we'll, we'll crack on. So good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Mohan Sikram, um, also Doc Merton. Uh, I'm a GP in uh, Wider Medical Practice, uh, which is a network of practices um, called the East Merton Primary Care Network. And I'd like to welcome you all to this talk webinar show, which is aimed at supporting our community and providing some valuable information for all of you. Um, as a GP, we've seen a real mix uh, of cases and due to the current changes, it's really valuable to arm the community uh, with some information so that you can share it on to some of your colleagues, friends, um, just in case you do have any of these questions or queries. So uh, we've got some fantastic topics. I'm gonna um, introduce our panel. So first up, we've got Helen Castledean from the Merton Council, who's gonna give an overview uh, of support for children and young people who um, in particular uh, have been affected by recent developments um, and what support there is which exists for uh, this cohort. And then we've got Juby Matthews and Suliksana Patil, um, who are from One New Merton and will discuss the components of health and well-being um, and give us some tips on how to preserve that and how to look after health and well-being, because we often forget that bit. Um, and then finally, we've got Tony from Greenwich Leisure Limited, who will enlighten us with physical activity um, and talk to us about what we can do to try and help, help ourselves get, get physically active. So a bit of housekeeping, we'll, we'll let all the speakers speak. Um, and then we'll have questions at the end. If you do have any questions you want to ask during the uh, talk, then please put it in the uh, web chat um, and we'll get the panelists to answer as we go along. Um, we've also got Alex um, who from Mutual Aid who will be helping us um, on the web chat and also with, with the slides. Um, and also Will who um, will be helping with the uh, YouTube uh, live feed as well. Um, so after this show, we will record uh, this uh, show and also put it on uh, YouTube feed as well under Doc Merton. So if you want to have a look at the slides or have a look at the um, show again, then please do that. So uh, enough of me. I'm going to pass over to our first speaker, um, Alex. Do you mind just putting the slides up? Um, and, and Helen, if, if I pass over to yourself, um, and then maybe if you just introduce yourself while um, we put the slides up, is that is that okay? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So my name is Helen Castledine. I'm the Senior Public Health Principal at Merton Council with a portfolio for children and families. Um, so I've been at Merton Hi. since November, um, but I've worked all over South West London. Um, I'm not quite a Merton girl. I'm, I'm a Sutton girl. So I grew up in Cheam, but not too far away. Um, so, yeah, I kind of know the had knowledge of the area for a few years. I won't say how many. <laughs> Okay, I think are the slides coming back? Yes, yeah, sorry, I do apologise. No worries, they were there and um, yeah, so I think it's always interesting because um, when we when we kind of reflect on it because what we found is that our work has radically changed in the last three months. So we've ended up spending the majority of our time on projects that we maybe did work on maybe once a month, maybe twice a month and they've kind of become our majority projects now. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, so if you move to the first slide. Um, so I just wanted to give a bit of context. So obviously things have changed massively um, this year. In March, all the schools closed apart from to key work and vulnerable children. So children have now been at home potentially um, for quite a few months. Some of the children have become, have started going back in reception in year one and year six, maybe wider depending on which schools, but obviously it's a massive change. We've never had anything um, like it in my lifetime. Um, and not, I would say in many people's lifetimes. So it is a massive change, you know, to suddenly have children at home and with parents who are working and trying to manage that homeschooling. So it's a very difficult time. Your secondary schools have obviously started coming back as well, um, but you've got all these restrictions. You can't have, at the moment, you can't have more than 25% of the cohort, um, that year group on site at one time. Sports and leisure activities are suspended. You know, suddenly we're not able to go to sports clubs. There's, you can't go and watch a football match. You can't, there's no Wimbledon, obviously thinking of Merton. Um, and I think I saw this figure um, that, you know, more than half of adults paid by the state are on furlough, which is amazing. 
you know, this complete, so, you know, it's been a complete shift in society. And also it's much harder for millions of families now to afford essentials such as food. Um, so, you know, we're living in a very, very different time that we couldn't even have imagined, I think, at the end of last year. So if we move to the next slide. So I just thought I'd start by the sort of start at the beginning, start well. So the 0 to 19 services have had to completely change. So from face to face contact where families were taking babies for checks, um, seeing health visitors, um, a lot of those appointments have been suspended. Um, and then I'm moving back to picking up with families for the key checks around 12 months, two and a half years. And it's all online. So it's a very different way of working again. Um, school nursing services beginning to work back in schools, having not been in the schools, they're now moving back in. Um, I've just put the contact number there, so if you've got any queries um, about anything, you can contact them through that. But we're in a very different world. You know, these services are not visible. We're not parent families are not coming across them in their day to day lives. They're very much more we're right now. So if we move to the next slide. Um, so one of the things I really wanted to flag is that we've got some quite startling figures that um, only 25% of cohorts, so only 25% of um, children are coming for, who are due to come for immunisations, are coming for immunisations. So people are missing those key immunisations because they were, you know, GPs have offered them throughout, but they're not feeling confident to come. And I think it's really important that GPs are offering those services. They can work around it. I think there's innovative things that people are looking at, kind of having maybe doing immunisations in car parks. I'm not quite sure how far that's got in Merton. But, you know, there's opportunities there to kind of come in and feel safe um, in spaces. There are, you know, socially distanced opportunities. So I really encourage you to do that. Um, with the school-aged um, vaccines those obviously haven't been taking place in schools but the service will be looking at doing catch-ups in the autumn again it's really important to make sure that children do finish those schedules and for children that perhaps missed out because they weren't you didn't, they didn't come in earlier they are still doing catch-ups so it's never too late for the children to go and have their MMR if they're at school they can go back and have them in the practices so I really encourage you to do that um, thinking about sexual health services, again, no face-to-face -face contact. Um, our walking clinics are closed for obvious reasons, but pharmacists have been going strong throughout lockdown and they're still offering free emergency contraception. There's a list there for the link. And also free condoms are available to young people via our C-card scheme. Again, there's a list via the link. And for young people over the age of 16, um, online sexually transmitted infection testing is available. Um, they need to follow the link and register and the test will be sent to their home and they will need to and then they can post it back um, and then moving on to mental health support services we've got lots of innovative uh, innovative approaches in mental health so a lot of services have developed online counseling and um, got the cooth service which has recently um, been brought online and that's going to be available for the next six months so that's another one. There's also the off the record online counselling. So if you're experiencing any, if your children or and young people are experiencing any anxiety, those services are there. There's also a really good resource hub on lots of things such as bereavement, return to school, emotional well-being, webinars, stress and anxiety, um, available through the Southwest London CCG link. And again, I'd really encourage you to um, check that out. There's resources there for parents as well. Do you want to go to the next slide? Um, and then this is something that's been launched during lockdown um, with the Merton Voluntary Service Council leading the Merton Community Response Hub. And it's been working with volunteers to mobilise the volunteer task force to help those isolated households and at risk of COVID-19. So people who are shielding and they can put people in touch with volunteers who can support them and also give them information about services. So again, a really good point of um, contact there and all the details are on the slide to go to the next one. Um, so these are some other services that we've got in place in the voluntary sector. So we've got to catch 22 um, for young people and um, that can offer practical advice, support, health interventions, counselling and particularly support around substance misuse. And it is open for referrals and advice throughout and it has been throughout COVID-19 and they're also doing some detached work. Again, contact details are there. 
And then Jigsaw for You, which is the key port partner supporting the Merton Community Response Hub, is also available to provide support for young people around mental health issues and other well-being issues. And then we've got for young people who are carers, if they need some support, we've also got um, Carers Support Merton is still in operation, again details there. And then we've got Off the Record, which is offering support for young people who are aged 11 to 25, and they're using, again, an online service, doing telephone counselling, and the details are there. And then I think it's important that young people have, obviously, there have been challenges about accessing places to do physical activity. It, um, all the council-owned parks are now open. Great place to bring your dog, but if you do, keep them on the lead. Unfortunately, at the moment, barbecues are not in place and um, are not allowed within the parks and we've also still got the playgrounds and the outdoor gyms temporarily closed um, but we have got tennis courts open and the beach volleyball is open and the Wimbledon athletics track is open so very slowly things are beginning to open again and those opportunities are there um, for young people who might be into bowling that's also open um, in certain locations um, and unfortunately the leisure centres are temporarily closed at the moment but hopefully we'll be moving towards a situation where they're open again. And then these are some resources around physical activity. These are national resources that can be accessed via the computer. So you can do a workout in your own home, do lots of things. I'm sure we've all heard about Joe Wicks and his online workouts. So there's a link there. I think he's having a rest at the moment, but there's plenty of material there to get you going. Okay, do you want to move? And then I just want to flag ch um, change for life. Um, so this has also had to change during lockdown. So the normal um, resources have been replaced with lots of um, inspired indoor games around Disney. Um, there's a 10 minute shake up activities are still there. Um, and but you've got to also remember that even though we're in lockdown, children should be aiming for 60 minutes of activity each day. And then there's a selection of recipes and um, for breakfast, lunch and dinner that you might want to access just to give yourself a bit of variety. OK. Thank you, um, Helen. That was a, a really good sort of summary of, of uh, what services still exist for or still around for young children um, or young people and children. So. Um, we'll, we've got those links, so we'll have them saved for later on. But is there another web? Is there is there like one area where people can go to and get all that all, all that information, or is it sort of um, yeah? I suppose is is there an area? Um, unfortunately, there isn't one area at the moment where all that information is housed. There's lots of information on the council site for young people, but again, I've given you that website that's got lots and lots of support for the CCG website for young people around mental health. So I think, yeah, there's lots of different sites. Okay. There is one question on there, which um, I don't know if you could have a look at an answer. And if, if you don't, then we'll, we'll, we'll come back to it afterwards, just because I, we're, we're gonna, we'll do all the um, speakers first and then we'll come back to it. But see if you can answer that on the web chat. Um, I'm going to pass, um, go on now to one new Merton. Um, so I'm, I'm going to hand over to uh, Jubilee and Suluxana Patil from one new Merton. Um, who are going to talk about health and well-being and how we can help support ourselves. So, um, Tubi and Sulu, can I pass over to you, please? Thank you. Yeah, hi. Um, um, we both, uh, Juby, my, myself, Juby Matthews and Selectioner, we work for One Year Merton, which is a health improvement services for Merton residents. So today, um, I'm going to talk to you about the mental well-being aspect of health and the exercise and the food uh, would be token by selection. So if you see, um, I've just written a, a plain sentence saying health and well-being, it's not a new concept, it's just being resuscitated. I mean, to say we've all health has been, and well-being has been important for all of us, or at least it has been desirable. It's just that when the pandemic came around, um, many of us kind of felt its need and its importance far more. You could go to the next slide. So the WHO definition of health is that um, health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and it's not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So if you kind of look at it, 
the this is a very broad definition it just does not include your physical or mental aspect of each individual but it also covers very broadly the social well-being aspect of our health as well so um it very importantly kind of points out that there are three aspects to any so we are very closely related to not only our individual health but also our relation with the society has a big influence on our well-being to the next slide please so um there is an image and i truly like this image a lot um it it is an image of an iceberg and if we kind of look at the image you can see more than 90% of that iceberg is submerged under water and that represent self care what you can do towards yourself for the whole health of you and our interaction with the health services is just that tip of that iceberg and that very little visible but the other important thing about this image is to show that your self care is literally hidden under water and it's not really seen and people don't really see what you do for your own health it's not very visible so the way you eat the the exercises you do the way you interact with the society everything those are really something that you do to yourself and and your interact and and how the services um take care of your health is that tip of that iceberg and it, each of us do have to empower yourself to look after your health better rather than giving that um you know you know you know control over to someone else you ought to control yourself take that control on your own hands so we have to take action in order to protect and maintain and improve our health and well-being what are the actions that we're going to take i'm going to talk about that in in a bit of a detail if you look the most important aspect and the key player in in health of each person is no one but yourself uh, and and that is what this image actually shows out that self care is primarily the most important aspect of your um health if i i was just looking at a statistic that shows our um most often a person visits a gp for about 10 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes in a week and i was just calculating that you have more than 10000 minutes in a week and that is more, that is a huge sort of minute that's left to us to do something for ourselves so what can we do to help ourselves if you could go to the next slide please so this pandemic has actually brought us and i and rightly to say it is an unexpected opportunity and the and to say i kind of written the word pandemic down says what can you do plan your day how do you plan your day have have a set time and follow that routine um have a schedule for your day um and that is very very important um to keep a regularity in your routine so you ought to plan your day what you're going to do what time are you going to wake up what are the things that you would like to do and then act on that day what is it that you what are all the things that you wanted to do but you could not do because we often give ourselves the excuse that we have lack of time maybe but now we have time at hand and what would you like to do so act on them take this moment and act on them nurture compassion be kind to yourself and to others we are often kind to others but we are very harsh with ourselves so be very kind to yourself have a very realistic when you set a goal be realistic is it achievable or not and the goal you set for yourself should be achievable the same thing be very realistic what you achieve out of other other people so everyone's in this house or everybody's in lockdown together so what we expect out of ourselves should not be too harsh and don't judge others um, actions too harsh we are all in this together we all going to come out of this together so be kind and be compassionate um in whatever we think and what we expect out of others now drink wisely what do i've noticed that i've got a, a, a wine shop on uh, in, in our high street and i just notice crates of the crates being taken out of the wine shop and it's just it's interesting how just the fact that we don't need to show up with work tomorrow or that we stressed or anxiety that we and i would like to say do not turn to drink but use that time instead of turning to drinks to hydrate yourself for nothing you will you will get a very young skin 
a young looking skin. We spent a lot of money on buying products to look young and what was simple way to look young. Exercise your body and mind. Engage in activities that is fulfilling. You know, and, and doing physical exercises is also very important aspect of uh, to have a mental well-being as well. Practice mindfulness. Enjoy each and every moment. Appreciate each and every moment as it happens. You know, the warmth of your tea as you drink your tea. Enjoy the warmth of that tea. Enjoy the giggles of the kids in your house. Enjoy each and every moment. So be mindful of what that moment is giving and, and engage in activities, daily activities, and being mindful of your activities. Improve your sleep is the next one. And when, you, when I'm saying improve your sleep, anxiety and um, stress is something that the, the, those can affect your sleep. Some of the ways that you could regularly and have uh, improve your sleep is to have a routine, wake up at the correct time and go to sleep at the same time. Kind of try to maintain that routine in sleep. Also try and avoid your screen time before you're going to sleep, like an hour before you go to sleep. Avoid your caffeine. Eating a light dinner before would be some of the ways to improve your sleep. The, the last one is connect, which is very important aspect of mental well-being. Now, people who are shielding, you've got to be very careful when I'm saying the word connect. You've got to follow the guidelines when, you're, when you connect. But at the same time, just virtually, you can connect with your friends over Facebook, over Zoom, over chat, connect with them. Pick up the call and call up one of the friends you haven't spoken in a while and enjoy what they're talking to you hear their words, listen to that properly and enjoy them. So connect with the people around. Do take your time to call someone who's in isolation, a neighbor who's in isolation, call them up and connect with them. It's very important. So the word pandemic, and, there, and if you look at it, the whole world pandemic has some things to tell, it's telling us to do what we can plan for while we are in lockdown. If you could go to the next slide, please. So being mindful, what does it mean when, when, when we are saying mindfulness? So it's nothing other than just being conscious about what's happening to you right now and at this moment. Some of the things that you could do is you know, just looking around and everyone, if we just look around and think about how many different colors are there in, this, in the room that you're sitting in, how many different colors, the textures, the pattern, and appreciating it. It would be surprising to see how many different colors we can appreciate. Even the smell. Can you use all your senses and appreciate them? The smell of the food that has been served in front of you. Are you able to appreciate that? So, and, and the texture, you know, of the of the bed sheet. It's something as simple as that. You know, use all your senses and and using all your senses also improves the mindfulness, what you feel and how you enjoy each and every moment. Now, appreciate small things, what you have in your life, appreciate, practice the sense of gratitude. And um, it's when you're saying gratitude, I would like you all to write a list of things that you take, take it for granted, absolutely take it for granted. And do write it down five simple things that you have taken for granted. And then you write down next to them, why are you grateful for them? And then the very next to them, do write down saying, how are you going to express gratitude? So if I am saying I'm really thankful for my children just being around me, how am I going to express it out to them? So taking simple things like, say, imagine your lunch that has been served to you. How are you going to be um, grateful for that? The people, starting from the people in supermarkets who have uh, played their role in making sure that so express your gratitude to them when you see them. So that is a very important aspect of being, you know, practicing mindfulness. Now, also, when you sit comfortably, relax and practice meditation or breathing, feel the air going in through your, your nose and coming out, feel it um, as you're doing it. That, and it's a, a rela that's a really good relaxation method. Now, when we are saying being mindful, you also have to be mindful of the food that you consume when you are, and that is a very powerful tool when it comes to saying, what are you going to eat? And, and it's a very powerful tool to control your food habits. Now, Selection, can I hand it over to you? 
Yes, yes. Then I think this was uh, covered by Juby. Thank you, Juby. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Yes, now as uh, Juby wonderfully mentioned about the mental well-being, how important it is to each one of us and the mindful activities that one can practice during this lockdown, there's something really hidden in that pandemic. I think even that has come to my realization and I look at each day, uh, though it looks like a similar routine, trying to bring something new, which was not tried before, is, uh, has been uh, a, quite a journey. So uh, up Apart from the mental well-being, coming to the next 50% is the physical well-being, which needs to be taken care as well. So how does a physical well-being uh, can be taken care is through food. And the other aspect is how much of uh, movement is there in your whole day. So uh, looking at the current slide, it's called as the Eat Well Guide by NHS. If we uh, look at it broadly, it simply tells us the way our food should be based. Uh, like two thirds is carbohydrates coming from the cereals, two thirds is of, uh, from the fruits and vegetables and uh, eating uh, protein uh, foods in moderations, dairy and dairy product a little lesser and the tiniest bit which you see that in, in the tiny region is the purple bit which is uh, oils or any types of fats that we would consume. Can we go to the next slide please? We will look at this uh, more closely. Uh, considering carbohydrates and proteins. So uh, what happens is with more of carbohydrate, our food should be based on these meals. That is, you can use either potatoes, breads, rice, pasta, and uh, more, more over high fiber whole grain varieties, which gives us more of the uh, vitamins and minerals along with it, including the fiber. And this uh, improves our health. As simple as using the potato with the skin, also plays an important role. And potato should be considered a carbohydrate and not a vegetable. Uh, and uh, coming to uh, the next slide, please. The protein part, these are the muscle builders. So foods such as beans, peas, lentils are the good alternatives to meat, especially if somebody is a vegetarian, but also if somebody is trying to cut down on the red meat, this, these are the good sources of proteins. Uh, they are uh, low in fat, but high in fiber and the protein and uh, rich with vitamins and minerals as well. Choosing lean cuts of meat and mince and eating less uh, processed meat uh, like bacon, ham, sausages or canned foods would be much better. Uh, coming to this immunity boosters, which are the fruit vegetables, these are um, uh, quite helpful. Eating five portions uh, of a different variety of fruit each day and including vegetables in form of salads, raw salads or in your stews. It's going to make sure that you get all these uh, immunity boosters filled with rich vitamins and minerals for a day-to-day -day basis. Let me go to the next slide, please. Proteins, as I just mentioned a little uh, while before, these are the muscle builders. So we need to include a wide range of uh, food that comes as proteins, beans, peas, lentils, and milk and cheese and eggs also. These are the good sources of calcium, which will take care of the bone health. And next slide, please. Yes, eating on a budget, as simple as uh, choosing beans and legumes. It can be canned, it can be frozen, it can be tinned. Just making sure you look at what is uh, written on the food uh, labels, which is provided on every food packets currently. So choosing nuts, and seeds, uh, chicken, seafood, beef. These are the wide range of protein foods which you can include in your day-to-day uh, -day diet. Next slide, please. This is another thing. Of course, as low as we feel, sometimes we head straight to the foods, very high in sugars and salts. We can immediately indulge in a, in a I think a bowl full of ice cream or sometimes a tub full of ice cream or sometimes uh, indulge in chips or junk food. I think this is something that we should be mindful about and limit the frozen and fast foods especially because they are empty calories. They are just gonna pile up some more pounds uh, on us. And uh, I'm sure we wouldn't want to have uh, that happen. So avoiding this during this lockdown is even more essential and rather going for more healthier versions like car carrot sticks with some hummus uh, this could, uh, or popcorn, simple unsalted popcorns or unsalted nuts 
can be a better version of going for a good snack. So next slide, please. Well, eating meals together, as Jubi rightly mentioned, during this lockdown, I think everybody has found a way. Now everybody is all together. Uh, most of the time, which uh, in a normal routine was highly impossible. I think this pandemic has brought in a, a wonderful opportunity for all of the whole family to bond together over every meal that we can sit down and enjoy with all the textures and the colors and um, which uh, God has given us. So I think it's a good thing to appreciate uh, we all being together. The next slide, please. Oh, this is another one thing which I have taken up very seriously. I think every day is quite a, an interesting day for me because I love to try out something new uh, every day, right from the simple ingredients available in your fridge. It did not be fancy uh, uh, ingredients uh, you will have to go and fetch. It is literally sitting right there in the cupboard. All you have to do is maybe look out for what is present, go on the YouTube or find a book and you will find something or the other to juggle and make up a cook up a wonderful flavored, flavorful food on the table. And believe me, your family is gonna appreciate it. You can take time to try a something new diet or some new recipe, go for it. The next slide, please. This, uh, I guess even Helen has wonderfully mentioned making time for exercises, uh, minimum of 150 minutes per week that, that if you break it down, it comes to 30 minutes uh, per day or at least five times in a week. But finding ways to move about throughout the day and, not, um, and breaking that mode of sitting for very long hours is quite essential, uh, especially in this lockdown now, because uh, eventually we find that we have either for work or for some other, other reason, or maybe we are watching telly, we have, uh, if we end up sitting on the couch for long hours, our body is not getting the movement it needs to uh, be getting it. So I think uh, it's important to be mindful about having time to exercise. Exercise is a miracle cure, actually, <laughs> which we have. It can reduce major illnesses such as heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and cancer by 50%, and early deaths up to 30%. And there's a very strong scientific evidence showing that uh, even minimum of 30 minutes of exercise every day can keep us very healthy and happier. It boosts our self-esteem, mood, sleep, quality, and energy, as well as reduces the stress, depression, dementia, Alzheimer's, and so such a big list. So just that 30 minutes of movement can bring in a big, big uh, pleasure into our overall well-being. So why not? Try something new. Use your uh, living room. Convert it into a, a, a Joe, uh, a PE with Joe with your kids if you have kids around. If not, uh, for elderly, there is use your chair itself. As you're watching something, you can do simple hand leg movements and make sure you strengthen your body parts and avoid all those uh, pains, whichever uh, in every possible way. Or go for a small stroll. Try to avoid cars anyways uh, and pick up food uh, on, on your way back and things like that. So you can find opportunity to exercise in every possible way if we start getting mindful about uh, doing exercises. The next slide, please. Yes, uh, regarding uh, currently, if you see, we are uh, on one new Burton website, you will find a lot of online activities, wonderful, helpful tips on being healthy, becoming smoke-free, eating well, looking after your mental well-being and staying connected how to stay connected during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So you, if you go to our website, you will find a whole range of uh, wonderful uh, applications sitting there. The next slide, please. Yes, uh, I shall uh, end my talk with one new Merton contact details right in front of you. As you can see that we are available from Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can self-refer yourself to us. Uh, currently, following the government guidelines, we have stopped face-to-face -face sessions, but we are supporting clients either by telephone or emails. We are also offering clients one-to-one -one, one -one consultations through virtual appointments on Skype or WhatsApp ses sessions. So give it a go. Uh, thank you. Take care. Excellent. Thank you, Salixana, and thank you, Juby. Um, I'm going to go straight on to Tony, um, just conscious of time. Uh, Tony, did you want to use these slides or did you want to um, take over the screen and um, run it yourself? Up to you. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm happy to have um, Alex uh, yeah. 
do the slides, so that's fine. Great. Do you want to introduce yourself and then I'll, I'll pass over to you. Thank you, awesome. Tony. Okay. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. Tiny Brown here from GLL, um, operator of Better Leisure Facilities. My role is community sports manager. Um, essentially, my role is based on getting all sections of our community active in our facilities. Um, so my role covers the Merton Leisure Centres and the centres we have in Rygate and Banson. So in Merton, we, of course, have Cannons Leisure Centre in Mitcham, uh, the reasonably new Morden Leisure Centre, um, opened a year or two ago, and Wimbledon Leisure Centre in Spa. Um, so if we just go to the next slide, please. So in this particular presentation, um, I mean, some of the other speakers have talked through this already in terms of being physically active, but hopefully from a, a leisure operator's perspective, we can kind of give a little bit more um, um, insight and info in terms of what the benefits are. And I think the first thing to really touch on here is, is the idea of physical activity. This is when we, we look at, we, sometimes we look at people being active and we think sport or competition. Um, the, what we're really looking at here is about being physically active, you know, defined as body movement produced by the muscles, which require energy, um, requires energy expenditure. Um, and then obviously a strand of physical activity is exercise. So in our facilities, we offer a number of different ways that people can exercise, whether it be in the gym, um, fitness classes, or um, just, um, just running or just being physically active. So, you know, exercise is, um, you know, obviously a subset of this and it's all aimed at improving a person's um, overall fitness. Can you go to the next slide, please. So as some of the you know, our, our speakers have touched on the, the benefits of being physically active and contributes to 30 to 50 percent reduction in the risk of developing, you know, common chronic conditions, including cancer, heart, heart disease, diabetes, dementia and depression. Um, of course, we know this is really important for our own state of minds as well as our body, and it increases those feelings that we have that the, the ladies from uh, One New Merton touched on of just feeling um, of that well being and that mental alertness and our own internal and external energy levels. Um, physical activity has the health benefits uh, that are indep independent to a, a, a person's uh, weight, and it obviously con contributes to re reduction of falls for older people and helps maintain that independent living amongst older adults, uh, which is you know, a key strand of the work in terms of making sure that all different people are able to access physical activity and exercise. Um, from a public health perspective, we, sorry, if we just go back one more, I think we just touched on the last point there. Thanks. Um, so yeah, from a public health perspective, obviously supporting individuals to move and uh, doing more and being more physically active is, you know, is one of the, in terms of it being a great, the greatest clinical and it's just a system impact. So you go to the next one, thanks. Okay, so when we look at um, physical activity and obviously a big um, topic around today has been about children and young people. You know, this is the real benefits are in terms of their bones, they're obviously developing and still growing and um, their cognitive functions in terms of um, coordination, and being able to move their bodies in different ways, uh, cardiovascular fitness, um, the, the muscle fitness, how long their you know, muscles can remain active and, and, in, and un, under stress, um, obviously helps uh, moderate, um, regulate, I should say, um, yeah, their, their weight. And really, you know, what we talked about a lot is that, um, you know, mental well-being and you know, preventing things like um, depression becoming, becoming an issue. And of course, for adults and older adults, you know, we, as we've touched on, really important in terms of preventing, you know, some of the, the, the health elements there. And, and obviously for older adults, um, the, the risks of falls and frailty and, and increasing their overall physical uh, function. Can we go to the next slide, please. Um, so as we know, the problem with inactivity, and th this, is, this is the really important thing that, you know, physical inactivity, inactivity is responsible for one in, one in six deaths in the UK. And this makes, this makes it dangerous. Um, it makes it as dangerous as smoking. Yet a quarter of us still are inactive, failing to, com failing to do the, you know, the minimum 30 minutes of activity each week. Being active is, you know, in, is, is an issue for, for every age. But I think when we talk about children and young people, I think if we get to a point where they're starting from a very young age, 
then it becomes a habit for life. And that's why you'll find in the schools there's a real target on getting the kids active, you know, whether it be just be walking, playing, being active, and hopefully carrying that, that particular habit um, throughout their lives. Obviously, this will help them prevent those long-term conditions around diabetes, cardiovascular, and, and respir respiratory diseases. Um, so differences in physical activity levels between groups can um, contribute to, to health inequalities. And that's a big part of my work that we target people that are from more vulnerable backgrounds where the access to physical activity is, is, is difficult. There's barriers, whether it be financial, travel-based, you know, these, these are the sorts of things that we have to communicate out and make some of the products and services we offer in our facilities uh, more affordable, more accessible. And I've obviously engaged in quite a few pro um, projects with, with Mohan and some of the other guys in, in the Merton public health team on, on making physical activity more accessible, and more affordable. If we go to the next slide, please. Okay, so if we look at the, the chief medical officer's guidelines, you know, in terms of physical, physical activity, adults and older adults, we talk, again, we touch on the ideas of the benefits for health, uh, the, pre, uh, the prevention of contracting, you know, common and chronic diseases. We see a breakdown there in terms of the times um, with getting your 150 minutes of exercise. And as you can see there from the graphic, there are different ways that we can remain active. And if we just for a moment, um, kind of go away from the idea of being in a physical environment, like a gym, like a leisure center, that sort of thing. And we just think about just being at home, just walking up and down the stairs. If you happen to be, you know, have upstairs in your home, just going for a walk outside. Um, if you're in a working environment, those who are still still working, you know, getting up every 15, 20 minutes to, to just take a walk and stretch your legs and just keep that positive um, movement going throughout throughout your bodies is, is, is really important, at, um, at, especially at a time that we're, we're facing right now. We go to the next slide. Okay, so this is something that, you know, we, we touch on in terms of intensity of exercise. So we, you know, if we look at the yellow graphic with being sedentary, that's, that, that's the really important thing, you know, us preventing ourselves from being, having a sedentary lifestyle and at least being in, in the light um, um, graphic in terms of being active. You know, this, this, is, this is really, really important. You know, we, you know, we are, as, as human beings, um, built to be, to be active, running, jumping, walking. And these are just simple things that we can do, you know, regardless of your fitness level. Just go, you know, if you, if you, if you feel that you're not very physically fit, then just start with just a very slow walk. You know, and make that a, a habit um, each and every day. And then as your fitness improves, then you can look to move through the graphic of going from moderate, ex moderate exercise to vigorous and then very vigorous. If we go to the next slide, please. Okay, so what some of the things that could count as moderate aerobic activity, so we, like we touched on, brisk walking, water aerobics, riding a bike, pushing a lawnmower, and dancing. These are all things that we can do. At, more importantly, when we talk about making sure all sectors of our community are able to remain active, these are all low cost activities, things that won't really um, create a barrier for, for, for anyone wanting to get active. If we go to the next slide, please. Okay, you also need to stay strong, you know, doing some strength exercises two or more days a week to work all the major muscles in the body. You know, you know if you're doing exercises, that um, build and develop your strength. You're able then to prevent injury. Um, your, your, your recovery from injury um, is a lot better and your overall well-being and you know, mindset is a lot more positive. And you, with that, you're maintaining an, an, a healthy weight. Um, activities for strength um, as listed below it could be lifting weights, working with resistance bands, using body weight, such as push-ups and sit-ups, um, heavy gardening. I don't know about you guys, I've been doing a lot of gardening in, in the lockdown period. Um, and it's, it's been really, as a sports person, it's been a nice, a nice thing to do um, as, a, as an alternate um, activity. So certainly recommend gardening. I don't think I would have said that a few years ago. Um, and yoga, again, an, another really a good thing in terms of your, your using your core, being flexible, 
and active. It's, it's, a, it's a brilliant um, um, exercise class that's very popular facilities. Okay, everyday activity counts. So increasing physical activity, you know, again, things like cleaning your car, uh, walking your dog, gardening, uh, carrying on, carrying the groceries home, carrying the groceries from home and walking and cycling to work. You know, and like we said, we wanna tackle sedentary behavior. So stand rather than sit, um, take regular breaks, have standing meetings. It's something we do at work a lot. We have walking meetings. You know, this, these are things that you just, it's about, we look at all these things. It's about a lifestyle change. And I know things are very difficult right now with all the challenges that we have in our community, but if we just have those small lifestyle, um, lifestyle changes, these can have a real benefit. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so I think this is my final slide before I talk about um, the ways that we hopefully can communicate with you guys in the community. Obviously, a state, sedentary behaviors we know is a state of muscle inactivity associated with met, the metabolic risk factors, cardiovascular disease, and mortality, regardless of engagement in moderate to vigorous activity. Um, no standard recommendation for ideal sitting time. Um, breaking up sitting time every, every 20 minutes with just two minutes of light, moderate walking can, re, can improve um, post-pradial -pra -pra -post uh, glucose and insulin responses to food. Um, and obviously it's really key to avoid prolonged periods of sitting and being more active more often. So if we just, I don't know if I can grab onto the screen just now, if you wanna click onto that link, Thank you. We're just taking you to the better website. So given that our facilities have been closed since mid-March, there's um, a, a quite a bit of information on our website, which talks about how people can remain um, active during this time. I don't know, Mohan, if our viewers can actually see what's on the screen. I'm just gonna go look at my phone at the same time. But what we've got here is, a page. I don't know if Mohan, we, if our viewers can see this. I don't. I, um, I can't see anything coming up actually. Um, is it coming? Oh, now now it's changed. Oh, awesome, awesome. That's brilliant. Okay, so um, we've got Alex there uh, working the screen. If we just scroll down, so something here that we've developed is our Better at Home page. And if you just go down to the bottom, there's a nice picture of a girl with a hula hoop. I think should be down there. Is it not? I think it was this page. If you go, just go down, keep going down. Uh, workout, so keep, so yo, know, keep going, keep going. Let's see under. So if you learn, go click on learn more under. You may also like. Uh, there we go. So these are 20, 20 fun things to do with the kids at home. And so I, I. I I hope these these uh, we can we can share the web link um, after at the end of this uh, this webinar. But some just some brilliant activities that um, parents families can do together um, just to keep everyone fit and healthy um, over this um, quite challenging time. There's a list of different activities that you know require very little equipment, if anything. But hopefully, um, people uh, joining in on this webinar will find these. Um, find these helpful and if anyone that needs any updates on how the leisure centers are responding to um, the current situation with the COVID pandemic um, we have a website better.org.uk forward slash coronavirus uh, for, for more information on when our facilities are open but of course uh, from a GLO perspective we were you know a little bit disappointed that we're not able to open the facilities as yet but um, as and when they're open, um, the message is that every, all the social distancing measures will be in place. Um, very reduced offer um, in order to ensure that people are, are safe and everything will be pre-booked. So we'll know that um, whoever, uh, we'll, know, we'll know exactly who's in our facilities at a given time. But um, like, like all the other guests, happy to take questions as and when they come in regarding the leisure facilities but thank you Mohan for the for the opportunity to to speak. Excellent thank you Tony that's been really useful and, and certainly you know improving physical activity 
for ourselves during lockdown and out of lockdown, how we can do simple tips to help improve that has, has been really, really useful. And I think um, both from one you, Merton, and also from yourself in terms of how that can be made achievable. So thank you for that. Um, if, if ever, we've kind of got um, some time now to go through any questions. So if you do have any questions, please do put it on the web chat. Um, and Will, have we got any from you, the YouTube link? Any questions come from there at all? If not, I've got um, one here which has been answered, but I want to um, ask again. But yeah, Will, have we got any from, from the YouTube link? None as of yet, no. Okay, all right. Well, um, th there was one question which has, um, looked like it was asked by Logie, um, which I think Helen's sort of partially answered. Um, and, and actually, I, I probably would ask a question on, on there, and I think they've sort of emailed us to take it further. But it was, um, Helen, it's how do we get counselling service to young families in Merton? So, uh, and this one is in particular asking about Tamil, but uh, I suppose I wanted to ask about other languages. So um, is there uh, translation services or um, links so people can, can get that through to them? Um, Helen, are, are you able to answer that? Um, I think that's a question that I can t I'd rather take away and just come back with absolute okay. concrete. Is that okay? Just then can I can give links and sure. Sure. and ascertain that people have definitely got facilities in place, but I know there are organisations that are in place. Okay. But yes, I think it also depends exactly what people are after. So that was why I was wanted to know in terms of the support, because it might be a particular organisation could provide that information, but we would need to see if they could get support with the language. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so Helen's going to have a look at that and, and bring that back. And certainly, maybe uh, what I'll do is I'll update it on the um, on the on the Doc Merton web link. You know, some of the answers to that. Um, and any slides, all these slides and links will go onto the Doc Doc Merton uh, YouTube channel as well. Uh, Tony, did you want to add your link in for um, to the web chat as well, just so that maybe people can keep that as a um, as a link to go directly into that, that might be helpful. Yeah, I think Alex has put the one in for the kids, but I can put a link in just for the general page on info regarding coronavirus and when facilities will be open. I'm happy to do that just now. Excellent. Um, great. I mean, it, it, I mean, it, that, I found that really useful in terms of seeing different aspects of health and well-being, children's services, and also physical activity. And I think. You know, it's, it's been a very unprecedented time and, and actually how do we look after ourselves? We all need to support each other, we need to connect. Um, as a GP, we've, we're seeing lots of people coming in uh, with lots of health worries and actually underlying that is anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. I worry about mental health um, getting worse as a result of social isolation. So uh, we, we do need to connect with each other and, and remember what's really important to us. It's made us question a lot of things. So. Um, I hope that was that was, that was useful um, for everyone and, and all my guests and speakers for, for coming along. So thank you, Helen. Uh, thank you, Juby. Thank you, Suluxana. And thank you, Tony. Uh, and as thank ever, you, Alex. Yeah, thank you, my friend. And Will, thank you very much for um, supporting as well. Um, if there aren't any sort of further questions, then um, I, I may take the meeting to, to a close. Just a reminder that um, these slides will be saved under uh, Doc Merton channel. Um, and if you have any future topics, please email me. Um, I'm happy to try and provide a platform for that. Right. Uh, thanks, Mohan. Really, really appreciative of the work that you guys are doing in the NHS and everywhere else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye, -bye.